Hello and welcome to another Design Clips video. This is Dawn and today I'm going to be sharing a fun technique that I gave you guys a peek of on Instagram and a lot of you wanted to know how to do it. So this is actually a really easy one. It's featuring our autumn leaves 4 by 6 inch stamp set along with our gift card layers die. So there are a lot of dies in this set and you can use them in any combination that you want. I'm going to show you how to use three of them to create these fun place cards. So I'm working on Tim Holtz Distress Watercolor Cardstock, and again, I'm using the Autumn Leaf Stamp Set and one of the floral images from our Botanical Bunch Stamp Set. I love these two sets together. They just complement each other so well. I'm going to do my heat embossing first, but if you prefer, you can do your watercoloring and then come in and heat emboss over your watercoloring after it's dry. Either way is going to be just fine. It's all a matter of personal preference. I know that the Versamark is clear and it's hard to see, so if you prefer to do the watercoloring first, by all means, do it that way. I prefer to do it this way because I can then have a better idea of the scale of my pattern and then I can make my patches of color that I add match the scale of the pattern. So here I'm doing it in stages. I'm stamping, applying powder, stamping again, applying powder, and then I will do all of my heat setting at once. Now since we are doing watercolor, we know our cardstock is going to warp, so I didn't want to stamp and then heat emboss stamp and then heat emboss because this would just exacerbate the amount of warping that we would get. So using the heat tools fuel time as few times as possible seemed like the best bet to me. And once all your embossing is done, it's time to do our watercoloring. And I'm using broken china, but if you have tumbled glass, that will do as well. And then I'll be using Hickory Smoke and Wild Honey. This is one of my favorite Distress Ink color combos. Um, I want to cover my whole house in this color palette. <laughs> I'm using a Ranger number no. 9 brush. This comes in their multi-pack and it's a great beginner set of brushes. I'll be picking my color up from a palette and I'll be using an acrylic block uh, as a little makeshift palette here. So I'll just apply each of my colors to the palette and this way I can pick them up from here and apply them to my cardstock. And this is actually an important um, step in this. Because we're going to pre-wet our paper, we won't be able to apply the markers directly to the cardstock. I get a lot of questions about this and you guys say that the marker, you know, isn't laying down color when you're trying to put it into a wet area. And that is because your marker is drier than the area that you're touching it to. And then your marker tip acts like a wick. So instead of releasing color and letting it flow, it's going to suck up the extra moisture. So that's the reason why your markers won't release the color onto wet paper. But we can easily get around that problem by picking up our color with a wet brush from a palette. Now our paper is starting to buckle because it's wet, so I'm just using my finger there to hold it down so that um, it's flat. If it's curved, then my ink will start to all run, which isn't a bad thing, but I want a little more control over where it goes because I'm a control freak. <laughs> I'm also being a little more um, decisive about where I put my colors. I know that when that blue and that yellow meet, they're going to create a beautiful green. And I want the gray to meet more with the blue to get like a smoky blue. So I am being a little more uh, decisive about where I put my color. But other than that, I'm just allowing the water to carry the ink and allow it to mix the way it wants to. I'm not going to use a paper towel to stop it or anything like that. I'm just letting it do its beautiful little thing. <laughs> now, another reason that I like to emboss it before I do my watercoloring is because that embossing creates little channels that will trap the color. So if I decide I want an area to be more intense, I can just drop more color into one of those little channels and I know it will contain it and it won't go outside of there and I can bring images forward or knock them back this way, like I've done with the berries here. And then, of course, you guessed it, splatters. <laughs> Gotta add my splatters. Okay, so once that's dry, if you decide that you want some areas of deeper or stronger color, uh, you can come in at this point and just add another layer. I'm going to do it with in just a couple of spots here to show you what I mean, and um, I'm going to leave the hard edges. You guys know that I'm a fan of soft and hard edges in my pieces, so I'm going to use this opportunity to come in here and hand pick out some areas to put that in. And this really isn't that important to our final project today because most of this will be covered up. However, this would make a gorgeous background for a card, so I thought it was worth leaving it in and showing you guys how you could really continue to build this up to make a very interesting background if you wanted to use it for a card. But to turn it into a place card, we'll be using the gift card layers die. This is the largest one and it measures four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And this Tim Holtz cardstock is already cut down to four and a half. 
or four and a quarter by five and a half. So basically we're just using this to get that stitched edge detail so it will match the name card that we're going to insert into it. And running it through the Big Shot is actually starting to take out some of that warp that we had going and we'll be running it through one more time but first we're going to score it at two and one quarter, nope, two and three quarters of an inch. And for that I just used the Martha Stewart scoreboard. So here we're going to decide which side we want to use and you can see both would look great but I'm going to go ahead and use the more full side and I'm going to use another uh, die from the gift card layer set and this one it cuts these four little slits in each corner and this is where we're going to tuck that nameplate when we um, cut it out. So I'll just center this up and run it through the big shot and now I have these great little corners and this will hold either a gift card or in this case a name card. And I'm cutting that on our white cardstock using another one of the dies from the gift card layer set. So now we're all ready to write our name and then it will fit nicely right into the little slots that have been cut by the other die. Now to create those name cards, I am going to hand letter them, but if you're not a fan of your own handwriting, you can always use an alphabet stamp to stamp out the name of your individual. I like to start by doing a light pencil guide of the name that I'm going to be writing. I'm not going to follow it uh, religiously when I go to write over it with a pen, but this just gives me a good guide. And for that I'll be using the Pentel Fude Touch Sign Pen. Uh, I like the tip on this. At first I was not a big fan of it because I was used to using a larger, softer brush tip pen, but after practicing with it, um, I found that I do like it. I just had to adapt the style that I was used to doing. So um, again, if you guys really want to master something, you have to practice it. I am by far no master at hand lettering. However, I can do something now that I'm not ashamed of and I would actually put on a finished piece. <laughs> And for me, the key was to slow it down. I mean, really slow it down. If you guys watch my periscopes, you know I'm not good at slowing it down. <laughs> I just want to rip right through it. So once that was all dry, um, it's dry right away, but I wanted to make sure it was completely set so that I could come in and erase the pencil guide from underneath. And for that, I'm using the Tombow Mono Zero Eraser. You could use any eraser you have on hand. I just wanted to touch that uh, ink as little as possible. So this little fine eraser is perfect for this. And now we're all ready to tuck that name card into its holder here. So you'll just slide the corners into each of the little slits and fold that over and you've got a nice little place card. Now I wanted to embellish it just a little bit so I took a watercolored panel that I did and die cut one of the leaves from our Autumn Leaves Companion die and I'll just adhere that to the corner with a small piece of foam tape. I think these would be perfect for Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, the fact that they fold is a plus because you could write a little message to each of the people inside or you could have them write down something that they're thankful for and everybody could share them at the dinner table. So I really love the way these turned out and I hope you did too. Hope you enjoyed the technique and if you did don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe if you don't want to miss future videos. Don't forget you can find all of the featured supplies in the description box below as well as on our blog at stampawaywithme.blogspot.com. You can find all the featured W plus 9 products at wplus9.com. You can connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, and Periscope. I've also picked out a couple of videos that might interest you, so if you're looking for what to watch next, click on one of the videos in the upper left or right. As always, thank you guys for stopping by, and I will see you next time. Bye!